Oh, it's a, a different format now, which is really nice. Okay. And we're going to check and see if it's on Facebook Live yet. And then if it is, we go. And we, we begin. Let's see. <laughs> okay. Here we are. I hit record. And we will go. And we are recording. Uh, buenos dias a todo. Como esta? Como estas, Toro? Uh, gracias. For, um, f thank you for joining me. Good morning, everybody. I'm back from Mexico. It was an amazing trip. I'll tell you about it in a little while. Meanwhile, okay, good. Escucha perfecto. Oh, es excellent. Okay. Gracias, Karina. So nice to have you here. All right, so good morning, everyone. We'll get started now. Um, welcome to the Neuro Bros Show with Russ Parker and me, um, Carl Sterling. Today, Russ is off. Russ is going to have um, surgery soon. He's going to have um, a uh, hip replacement. Let's see, on Wednesday, este semana, this week. So, miércoles, este semana, Russ Parker... Recibe a new hip. Bravo, Russ. You're going to do fantastic. You're, you're a warrior. You're going to do fantastic, my friend. So um, let's talk about some stuff here today. I want to begin by saying welcome and thank you for joining me. We've been starting to get feedback about the show, which uh, makes me very happy that people are enjoying the information. Uh, we do this live on Mondays at 10 a.m. most of the time, although last week I was in Mexico. Let's begin with memory. I want you to remember nine palabras, words. Uh, quiero uh, recuerden nueve palabras. Bienvenido, Thelma. ¿Cómo está Thelma Ramos? Nice to see you. Gracias for joining me. Um, so, nine palabras. Ahora, I want you to remember them. We're queered in uh, las palabras. And in a little while, I will test you on these. Okay, we're going to do a little game. I don't want you to write it down. No escriben. No escribe. Memoria. Solo memoria. All right, here they are. Are you ready? And then we'll talk about other stuff. Oops. Okay. Uh, as soon as I figure out what I'm doing, I'll do it. But sometimes I don't know what I'm doing. So it takes me a minute to do anything if I don't know what I'm doing here. Okay. And the words are starting right here. Okay. In English, green. Verde. Is that true? Verde. Green. Okay. Oops, wrong way. Cucumber. Cucumber. Como se dice en español uh, cucumber? Uh, no sé, so cucumber. Okay. What do those two have in common? Verde. Green is a color. Cucumbers are green. And you can make pickles out of cucumbers. So the third word is going to be pickles. So we have verde or green, cucumber, pickles. Okay, tres más. Three more words before we get to the next three words. Yellow, y. Corn. Uh, ¿Cómo se dice en español corn? Uh, no sé. <laughs> corn. Corn is yellow. Limón. No, is that limon or is that that would be in, well? So it's lemon, lemon, corn, yellow corn, lemon. So we have green, cucumber, pickle, yellow, corn, lemon, e, rojo. The word, la palabra, rojo, red. Tomato, tomatoes are red. And my favorite. 
pizza, except for the tacos in Mexico and the food in Mexico. La comida en Mexico is muy delicioso. Oh. Right here, right there, my belly. Okay, so, nine palabras, let's go back. And then we'll move on, okay? Más tarde, later, I will ask you to remember these. Don't write them down, no. No escribe. Green. Verde. Cucumber. Cucumber. Pickles. Pickle. Yellow. Y. Corn. Corn. Lemon. Red. Rojo. Tomato. Tomato. Y pizza. Okay, we'll come back and visit those later. So, again, welcome. I have my my uh, things here. We have nine palabras. All right, so nueve palabras. Today, I want to talk about creativity and Parkinson's. Creativity and movement disorders. Creativity and the nervous system. All right, remember those words, though. Remember, nine words. Be thinking about those, but pay attention. All right. Art. La música. Ballet, dancing, um, pottery, I will show you. Being creative can very much help all of us. Total, uh, all the people. Uh, total, la gente. Because when we're creative, if we enjoy what we're doing, we are activating dopamine circuits in the brain. All right? Now, we know in Parkinson's and in other movement disorders, such as uh, multiple system atrophy, different types of Parkinson, Parkinsonian type of things, we know that the dopamine circuits are not activated the way they should be. There is less dopamine activity because there's less dopamine production when you have a neurological disorder like any of these. So why is that important? It's important, uh, more importantly, because dopamine is a neurotransmitter. It tells the brain, tells the body through the neuromuscular skeletal system what to do. For example, por ejemplo, if uh, I want to walk, if I want to begin walking, so um, si quiero caminar, I, me, I can do it, no problem. I just get up and I go. All right, todo bien. Total bien. However, in a person with Parkinson's or a do dopamine deficiency type uh, situation in the cerebro, in the brain, we also know that they may not be able to begin the way they want to. They consciously know, I want to walk. Quiero caminar. But they can't get started. That's because this neurotransmitter is diminished in production okay so maybe they're standing there it might be like this like okay i want to go oh 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 and i finally get going finally get going i'm stuck i'm frozen okay well there are a lot of things that can help to produce and increase the amount of dopamine uh let's say this dopamine circuitry that is active so that you improve movement and reduce fall risk there are, there are so many, but today I'd like to talk about being creative because not only does uh, creative maybe help people to move better, um, it, it may help to diminish symptoms, tremblor, so tremor, involuntary movements. Um, I want to show you some examples of pieces of art that were created as gifts for me. Regalio uh, para ti. Uh, con people, uh, Juente con Parkinson. Uh, beautiful, hermosa regalio. For example, in England, United Kingdom, my, my friend, mi amigo um, Ian, Ian Pryor, he has, uh, tiene, um, I, I believe it's uh, generalized dystonia, a whole body involuntary movements however when he goes in and he spins pottery clay tremblor involuntary movement 
they go away. He made this for me. It's a vase. It's a beautiful vase. Okay? When he was making this, there were no symptoms. You wouldn't know that he has any kind of tremor or anything like that. Absolutely fabuloso. See? So he enjoys this. When we do things that we enjoy, this activates dopamine circuitry. It will help us to diminish symptoms. It will help us to probably... Now, remember now, remember. Everything is a generalization. Nothing is the same for everyone. And everything's everyone's uniquely, differently affected by their, uh, let's say, their condition, diagnosis. All right? But generally speaking, when we have increased dopamine activity, dopamine circuits are more active. This will generally help us to move better and reduce fall risk and reduce involuntary movements. Okay? So, coming our mejor. Reduce your caídas. The total bien. Okay? This. Otro. Otra art. This was created by my friend Adriana Silva Mendoza in Chetumal, Mexico, who, uh, let's see, I, I saw her last week. Um, oh, that's future. Uh, I saw her last week in um, Oaxaca. Uh, Adriana lives with uh, Vivekon Parkinson, but she made this. She made this for me, a gift, a beautiful gift. Hermoso regalo. See, um, gift in Espanol. Look at here. Neuron, neuron, synapse, synaptic firing pattern. When she does this, when she does her artwork, her symptoms diminish because she's doing something she enjoys doing. This helps to reduce, uh, uh, helps to increase dopaminergic, dopaminergic activity, dopaminergic circuitry. When we have increased amount of dopamine uh, circuitry, we know that, boom. Oh, Jan. Jan Heller. Gracias, mi amiga. In, uh, uh, Jan is in Detroit, Michigan. And yes, it's amazing. So I don't know if you saw this, Jan. This was made for me by a friend in England, Ian Pryor. Pottery. Generalized dystonia. When he does pottery, his symptoms go away. From my friend Laura. E, uh, Adriana, e, um, many others. When they do art, they're being creative. Dopamine increases, involuntary movements decrease. Todo bien. Uno más. Oh, dos más. I have no idea what you call this, but when you make something like this, okay, sewing, um, I don't know. Symptoms diminish because they enjoy doing this. Uno más. From another one. From Adriana. Um, tres años ayer. Three years ago, she made this for me. This is a box. Look. Okay. My initials. Art. Like paint. And then this and this and this. Okay. It's muy hermosa. Muy hermosa. Okay. When she makes this, her dopamine is increased and involuntary movements decrease. So I have things in this. See? I have things, right? I use it all the time because I love it. It's a special gift from a special friend, somebody who I love dearly as a friend. So let's go a little bit more into this now. We have um, many books. I have to find my books. Where did I? Oh, here we go. Let me save the best one for last. Okay, I'll start out with a, a, a book that talks about music, which can also help with movement. Okay, la musica can ayudar uh, 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 um, um, movimiento. See, si? mejor. Um, it will improve movement. I didn't try, stop trying to speak Spanish, right? But I love to speak Spanish. Uh, me gusto. Uh, 
hablo español, uh, practico mi español todos los días y um, I enjoy it very much. Okay, so we have research from neurologists and doctors to show us that music can help with our emotional health, our mental health, our movement. It can help us to focus. It can help us to remember. That's just part of it. There's so many other things music can do. Here's a book by uh, Oliver Sacks, an amazing man. If you ever saw the movie, hmm, what's the name of that movie? Well, I'll think of it. Uh, Robin Williams is in the movie. It's fantastic. Oliver Sacks. This is called Musicophilia. Musicophilia. Uh, un libro uh, muy. Uh, that's great. It's fantastic. Fabuloso. I don't agree with everything in here. But this is Oliver Sacks, and I'm Carl Sterling. This guy knew a lot more than I did. I agree with most things in here. All right? So we can see that, oh, mi madre, hola madre, is watching right now. Uh, thank you, madre. I'm speaking Spanish somewhat today, mom. <laughs> so we're talking about benefits of music to the brain, movement, and reducing symptoms. Okay, so musicophilia, Oliver Sacks, I would recommend getting it. I have three libros uh, about music, okay? The second one, This is Your Brain on Music by Daniel Levitin. Uh, he's an amazing musician. He is a bass player. He's worked some, with some of the most famous musicians in the world, like Stevie Nicks and I, I think Michael McDonald and whoever. But he's also a neuroscientist. Uh, that's his job now. And his this book is about your brain on music, meaning when you listen, what can happen? What kind of benefits may you receive? Okay, well, you may receive many benefits. Trust me, I know, because I see it happen all the time. Excellent book. And the last one, of course, I show every time I'm on Zoom, my favorite ever, this. Jan, did you get the, this one yet? Um, the Handbook of Neurologic Music Therapy. It's like a textbook. Absolutely amazing fabuloso, marveloso, marveloso, ah, como se dice en español, all right, so this is an amazing book, it talks about how the chemistry in the brain can change when you're listening to music, dancing to music, creating music alone, or creating music with others, okay, Yeah, it's a, a, so Jan's saying she didn't get it yet. When you get it, you're probably going to sit down and never get up again because it's so interesting. Written by uh, dozens, dozens of doctors. Uh, it's all research-based. It's not just like words. This is research. Very interesting. Muy interesante. Uh, Excelente. All right, so in Oaxaca last week, and of course in my work that I do anyways, we use music to help people to move better, improve movement. Um, I want to show you, uh, yeah, I'll show you a video in a minute, but we have a, there's a company out of Buffalo, New York called Electroskip. Okay, this is an experiment. We were at University Hospital uh, Institute of Human Performance. Uh, let's see, um, uh, 16th of April, okay. So, so these things strap on the shoes, All right? These strap, they just go on the bottom of the shoe and it has uh, sensors, one here for toe, one here for heel. And they are connected to a, uh, a Bluetooth device. Okay, um, connected to Bluetooth. And then this transmits to a tablet, okay? This transmits to a tablet. And I'll show you a video because this is really fun. In Oaxaca, uh, Angeles, y uh, Laura, y Adriana Silva Mendoza, y uh, others. They put these on the shoes and we had fun. Oh, and Chris Garcia too. So let's take a look, okay? On Instagram, it's just Carl Sterling. Oh, 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 oh. Mm -hmm. Parkinson Art on Instagram. Trevor runs the page. He's based in England. This features, this Instagram features 
beautiful art by people with Parkinson's. Absolutely amazing, okay? Absolutely incredible. Parkinson art. All right, so now I go to my page. We're going to look at some fun stuff. On her feet are the... On her feet are the straps, and when she steps, muy divertido, lots of fun. That's Adriana, and we had fun as she laughed. All right. It sounds really funny, right? Some of the sounds are pretty funny. I, I enjoy it, and pretty much everybody does. Baby. 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 That's a lot of fun. Let uh, me know, please. This is Chris. Chris. Okay, so, I mean, very cool, right? Really cool stuff. Well, what we're experimenting with on this is, um, I'm very sorry, very sorry, one second here. We're experimenting with um, the ability to make music while you move, but make it with your feet. Okay, so the idea is to make the music with your feet. And uh, we did research, uh, we're doing more research this Friday on... Uh, more research recording with with this device uh just to see how it helps to improve movement we we know this the the, the point of this topic though today is here's the bottom line when we're doing things we like to do this is for all of us by the way i mean we all have a brain we all have nervous systems okay so all of us must have okay this is it this is uh, we all need <laughs> sorry but no we need dopamine okay without dopamine we wouldn't, wouldn't be able to move we wouldn't be able to, we wouldn't even be alive okay so when we do things we like creativity art pottery painting create music dance you know baie, we increase dopamine dopaminergic activity and circuitry in the brain this helps us to feel better move better and reduce risk of falling probably most of the time all right so if you have any questions on any of this stuff please type in the chat box uh, a key and uh, zoom or comments on uh, facebook live e now cafe Oh, I'm one of the CSO. Okay. The next subject today has to do with sleep. Okay, sleep is very, very important. My favorite book about sleep is this by Walker, Matthew Walker, PhD. Why we sleep. Unlocking the power of sleep and dreams. I haven't really gotten into this as far as the, although I've read it twice now and I have it on audiobook too I'm more interested in the aspect of sleep and I want to talk with you today about um, uh, I'm I'm uh, being distracted here folks because Jan made a comment thank you Jan about uh, nerve issues uh, absolutely sure remember that we all have nervous system we all have a brain we all need dopamine we all need to sleep is more important, uh, very important for many reasons. Cognition, health, longevity, focus, just everything. Sleep is very, very important. So I want to go through a couple of things today. I've spoken about them in the past. Oi, uh, I mean, ahora. I want to talk about how to help you set up your circadian sleep cycle. This comes from the Stanford University Huberman Lab. I'm just going to say this. 
the first thing you should do when you wake up in the morning, as long as there's light outside, it's daylight, even a little bit, go outside and look up at the sky for a minute, two minutes. That's it. Take in natural light. Allow the light to come into your eyes. If it's sunny, great. Don't look into the sun. That could damage your eyes. But look away. Look other areas. The sun's only in one spot. Then the rest of the sky is yours to look at and not hurt your eyeballs. Right? So you take it in. Why? Well, as it turns out, research shows that the receptors in the bottom of the retina, okay, retina, bottom, they are different than the receptors in the top of the retina. So when you take in this natural sunlight, you set your circadian cycle for the day with the activation. This will activate cortisol. Cortisol can be bad, but it's necessary. It's another thing that we, we must have in our lives. So cortisol will help us wake up and get going in our, our day. So you go out naturally, not through the window. Go out. Go outside. You know, just get out there. One minute. Two minutes is better. Five minutes is better. But one to two minutes. Get out there. Take in the natural light. I do it every day now. I already sleep really well. Oh, don't mirror. Oh. Duermo. Duermo muy bien. Todos las noches, but not everyone sleeps muy bien every night. I do. So I have been working on this for about three weeks with various people. And what I found is that most of the people are starting to sleep better. Okay, because they're going outside. They take in the natural light. Those receptors in the bottom of the retina activate cortical circuits, cortisol circuits in the brain. And they trigger the wake cycle for maybe 14 to 17 hours for that day. Now, at night, before the sun sets, you go outside again, one minute, two minutes, one minute ma a minimum, but more is better. Before the sun sets, it could be dusk, but make sure you take in more natural light in la noche. This helps to activate the melatonin. Melatonin is going to help you to get to sleep. Okay? So it helps you. It sets up the melatonin cycle. It prepares your body to sleep after, what, two, three, four, five hours, whatever. And then hopefully, and so far many people have experienced better sleep, improved sleep. Okay? So muy importante. Daylight in the morning, first thing. Outside, not through the window. Daylight in the evening. If it's raining, well... Take an umbrella and look up anyways. Or snowing, put on a winter coat. <laughs> right, so um, I just wanted to share that with you. A way that you may be able to improve your sleep and get to sleep faster and stay asleep longer. There are other things we can do too. We'll talk about it in future episodes. I wanted to also say that... Um, oh, no recuerdo. I just had one of those moments where I went off. Let's see, what was I going to say? I have no idea. So this book is excellent. And if you want access to the Huberman podcast, just uh, let me know and I'll send it to you. Okay, because it's really, really good. All right. Next, let's go over the nine words. What are the nine words? Nueve palabras. Dígame, dígame. Tell me, tell me what they are. Maybe type them in the chat box. If you weren't here for it, don't worry about it. We're going to go over them again in a minute. Remember, recuerden las palabras, nueve palabras. I'm waiting. Let's see if anybody types it in. Escribir. I will tell you because I don't want to waste any time. Green. Verde, cucumber, pickle, yellow, y, corn, lemon, tres más, red, rojo, ah, Toma. you win a prize, uh, te veo en julio y, uh, 
Excelente. I'll give you, I'll bring you a trophy. Karina, excelente. Karina and Thelma, perfecto. Ah, Jen, yes, okay, yes. Rojo, tomato, pizza. So why did I use this? I want to, I want to um, can you guess why I might have used the visual on this? Probably pretty easy to guess, right? I'll tell you why, because I'm a real good visual learner. I'm also a good audio learner. When I have both together, I learn better. Yeah, Thelma, great. Karina, great. Jan, great. Awesome. Okay, well, well, we'll go through and we'll use these. So I, what I discovered is it came to my mind a few months ago. I was working with somebody who just couldn't remember any of the words when I told him just three words. Solo tres palabras. Oh, no, we're querede. So you know what? I showed pictures, photos. And guess what? He's a visual learner. When he sees, he remembers. All right. Green. Cucumber. Can you hear my stomach? Oh my gosh, it's hungry. We're going to talk about hunger in a minute too. Cucumber, pickle, yellow, corn, lemon, rojo, tomato, pizza. Bien? All right. So we'll add more ne words next time. I want you to remember those words for later today, uno mas, and next week. But don't write them down. Cerebro, solo cerebro, only in the brain. Keep them in your brain. We want to see if we can turn this short-term memory into a long-term memory. Okay, for example, phone number. I remember phone numbers from when I was a kid and when I lived in Chicago and my first phone here in Syracuse. And, you know, I remember. I don't know why I remember numbers. You know, I count things all the time, too. Maybe it's because I'm a drummer. I have no idea. But what I know is that Generally speaking, when you're going to get a phone number from somebody, you know, maybe you need to call them about some business or you want to take them on a date. I don't know, right? Can I have your phone number, please? Oh, sure. La, 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 la. You want to remember that number because you want to call that person, right? It's muy importante. But as soon as you write it down, probably gone. Well, if we work at it, though, we can start to improve our short-term to long-term memory. So if we remember, repite, often, often, recuerde, recuerdo, often, then we will turn those numbers or those words, those vegetables and colors and fruits and whatever, we'll turn them into something we remember long-term. This is just a, a very simple way. Simple does not mean easy, but it's a simple way to practice memory. Okay, so I do this with people all the time. While I'm thinking about it, I want to show you a little fun thing. It's called the Stroops test, S-T-R-O-O-P-S. -O -O um, it's a, uh, I don't know, I, I've had this administered on me in three different, well, five different situations. I've been in three studies as a control subject in Hershey, Penn State School of Medicine. Um, I don't have Parkinson's, so... I was in as a control subject, so they compare controls with people with Parkinson's for brain scan, brain activity, memory, recognition, how how fast can your brain change gears and go to something else. Well, I want you to uh, join me in a little challenge, okay? Stroop's test looks something like this. Okay, we have three things on this that we can be looking at. First of all, we have a word. What's the word? What does it spell? Yellow. Yeah, yellow. What's the background color that yellow is on? It's blue. And what color are the letters written in? Well, I don't know what it looks like to you, but I can tell you it's supposed to be purple, right? Okay, so what? Oops, that's pizza. Oh, tengo muy hambre. Okay. Green. Blue background, well, that's supposed to be, I don't know, yellow or orange or something. I actually can't tell. Jose Diaz. Hola, girl. Vegas, ah. Gracias, senor. Jose, I'm glad you like the classes. Gracias, muchas gracias. Okay, let's go to another one. So let's do this. I'm going to just do, we're going to do three things right now. Ahora, tres cosas. First, I want you to read the word. We'll do like 
Six words, okay? Go. Green. Green. Red. Green. Yellow. Blue. All right. Simple, right? That's probably the easiest one. Next. Tell me the color of the background they are on. Okay, ready? We'll start with the next one. Rojo. Verde. Azul. Purple. Como se dice purple in Espanol? Uh, rojo. I'll say yellow. Okay. Uh, the last thing, though, the last thing is, what color are the letters that spell the word? Not the word, just don't read the word, not the background. What color are the letters written in? Ready? Let's start with the next one. Well, that could be orange. It really depends. And, of course, over Zoom, it's never going to look quite right. Uh, let's go to a different one. Let me find some different ones here. i got to get some better examples here. There's too many that are the same. No bueno. Uh, well, we'll just do this. What color are the letters? I'll accept blue or purple because it might look like either, especially over Zoom. Orange. Blue. Blue. Two more. Green is blue. Uh, let's do another one. I think, ah, here we go. Purple. Como se dice purple in Espanol? Anyways, this is something I like to do with people because it tests their ability to recognize what I'm asking them to recognize. Read the word, tell me the color of the background, tell me the color that the letters are written in. We go through this and we want to see how fast they can go through all three of those and how fast they can shift gears cognitively, right? So it's a, ah, Marado. Marado is purple. Gracias, Jose. Let's talk about one more thing today, okay? Uno cosa más y necesito café. Oh. Oh. It's uh, from Mexico. I got it in Mexico. So good. I would like to talk about food and not so much nutrition, but food and hunger and how it relates to cognition and focus. Over the pandemic, well, I had early December last year, uh, I had, thank you, thank, Thelma, gracias, Marado equals purple, okay, gracias. So when I had COVID, um, I felt awful, it was horrible absolutely horrible but there's always somebody worse off right but i didn't i had never felt so awful in my life yeah it's just really bad but i'm over it and i'm fine i'm very lucky but oh i gained weight i put on my belly my belly got bigger my belly got bigger by about 15 pounds so maybe uh six siete kilos no bueno and I didn't feel good, right? I was, I had no sense of smell, but my appetite was very, very healthy. And I ate a lot, but I wasn't moving. So I ate more than I was, I ate more calories than I burned through movement because I wasn't moving. This was actually about 13 weeks. So, once you don't say, tres de semanas, um, no movimiento, um, un poco movimiento, not much. Okay. So I gained weight, 15 pounds, and um, I've been studying and studying and studying. And, you know, when I talk about nutrition and diet, I'm going to open up a can of worms here because people are just going to say all kinds of things about me, and it's okay. You have to do what's right for you. I don't subscribe to any particular diet. I'm not here to say that anything, um, well, you know, some things are bad, period. They're just no bueno. But there are a lot of different diets that have helped people. I believe there's a lot, we're all very sophisticated and we are uniquely different than each other. You know, I don't know if it's our blood type. There's a book, Eat Right for Your Blood Type. Uh, I read it 25 years ago and then there's another version of that book. And so you could have blood type. It could just be your genetic makeup. It could be your lifestyle. It could be a lot of different things, right? Things that I just, I'm not going to go and study because I, I don't have time. But one thing I do know is that it's important to, when you want to 
work on your health and your body and let's say reduce your weight if that's the target or maybe redistribute um, um, fat, muscle, uh, body composition, okay? I could actually weigh more and have less fat if I build muscle because mu building muscle will help to burn fat. Now, that's a fact. We all know that. There's no dispute about that, period. All right, so uh, what, I, what I'm going to tell you, though, is I, I needed to do something to get my weight down. I did not want to travel to Oaxaca weighing 237 pounds. That would be no bueno. Very, very bad. Let's see, 37, 220. So that would be about 107 kilos. I don't know, 100, not, something like that. Too many kilos, though. So um, what I did is I studied and studied, and I, f I decided to try something. And this is based on research from Harvard University and Stanford University, Dr. Um, uh, uh, I can't remember his name right now, but he's at Harvard, and then Dr. Andrew Huberman at um, Stanford. And they, they've talked together, and they have things on YouTube together, and you can watch. So I can't believe I can't remember his name, though. Still having a little bit of memory problems, but, you know, told him again. Um, I decided to eat one meal per day. Now, I'm going to get all kinds of flack for this. People are going to they're gonna say, hey, you know, you shouldn't do that. It's not healthy. It's a bad example. Well, I only did it for three and a half weeks, and you know what happened? I lost 12 pounds. I drank a lot of water. I, uh, I, I will say that I had a snack during the day, but you want to know what my snack was? Because it's a super low calorie, dill pickles, a quarter of a pickle, maybe in the morning. I just had a quarter of a pickle this morning. I have another quarter of a pickle, maybe, well, a las uh, dos, 2 p.m., and then I'm going to leave and go work with two different clients, come home. A las siete, I will eat dinner. All right. This has worked very well for me. I will go to two meals a day soon. This is not a permanent thing. I'll get back to three meals a day. But right now, the, the way the body works is very interesting. And there's no harm done in what I'm doing for me. I'm not. This may not work for everybody else. So my disclaimer here is do what's right for you. If you have diabetes, type 1 or type 2, then you need to make sure that you get your, you know, regulate your insulin. And that might mean you need to eat. I'm not here to tell you to stop eating. I'm not here to tell you that not eating, uh, that starving yourself is good. No, it's not good, but I'm not starving myself, okay? I'm not trying to promote eating disorders or being anorexic. I'm not trying to promote binging and purging. I haven't purged in 40 years this year. I don't throw up you know so i mean i know that's disgusting but it's true i don't i mean what i'm doing is a very temporary thing that's helping me very greatly so you know the pickles actually have some uh things about them that i like and like I, i'm not sure about electrolytes but uh um definitely sodium which helps me a lot i crave sugar never ever 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 I never crave I used to, right? Mom, I used to love sweet things all the time. I don't anymore. You know, people have ice cream around me and a cake, and I, I probably won't have any. And if I do, it's that much, tiny. But when we look at, uh, we're almost done, too. Cinco minutos, cinco minutos más. Five more minutes, I'm done. But food and hunger is very interesting. I always have believed that if I'm a little bit hungry a lot of the time, it's healthy. Well, guess what I just learned recently, last fall? When you're hungry, not starving, but hungry, a little bit hungry, or maybe a medium bit hungry, okay? One thing that can help you to fend off your hunger is drink water. I drink a liter of water, right? I could gulp the whole thing now, but right now I'll just have a sip. Muy bueno. Okay, so water can help to fill the gap and uh, diminish hunger or get rid of it for a little while. Now I have my system set up so that I'm just going to eat once a day until the end of this week, and then I go to two meals, maybe three. I don't know, but they're going to be small meals because I don't need a lot. I'm 60 years old in 40 days. 40 days. Uh, I will have 60 years. 
All right, so I don't need to eat as much as I used to. My metabolism has slowed down. So if I eat too much, I'm going to gain weight. But let's go back and talk about food and hunger and how that affects your brain, just in the area of focus, because it will affect it other ways, I'm sure, and I don't know. I'm just telling you what I know right now. I can tell you this. When I'm a little bit hungry, I work much better. I can I can focus much better, hyper focus. Okay, escribo muy bien when I'm hungry. I write. I create. Uh, when I was playing drums, when I was hungry, I would play better, because I don't know why. I should know, but I don't. I'll probably tell you next week when I learn the why behind it. But right now, I will just say that the being a little un poco hambre will help me to focus and be more productive. I am much more productive when I am a little bit hungry. Okay? If it gets to be too much, I drink the glass of water, I have a quarter of a pickle, I eat five calories, that's nothing. I get my sodium, it tastes good, I love pickles, dill pickles, and then I move on with my day. Okay? I'm not going to eat potato chips, although I love them, it's my favorite food, it's my favorite snack. I'm not going to eat I'm just not going to eat the snacks because they stick with me. They stick right right in the belly, right here, you know. Uh, no, bueno, I'm not going to do that to myself. I used to be really heavy. I can't go back to that anymore. And during the pandemic when I, well, uh, I gained 15 pounds, I was actually very worried that I wouldn't be able to lose it. But I did the research. I followed Stanford. I, f I followed Harvard. I, I can't remember this guy's name. What is that doctor's name? I think it's, oh, Sinclair, David Sinclair, Dr. David Sinclair teaches at Harvard Medical School. Uh, he wrote a book. I don't remember the name of it. I have it, but I don't have it up here with me. And it talks about uh, actually prolonging your life, like living a longer life, extending your life through, well, one of them is not starving yourself. And I want to make this very clear. I'm not promoting eating disorders. I'm promoting something that many of us have done, I've done, and a lot of us still do, is we eat too much food. We don't need to eat so much. Okay? Go find a dietitian if you need help. I am not a dietitian. Yes, I went through a nutrition program in college a few years ago. But I, I really don't think it was that good of a program. It was just okay. There's a lot more to consider about our health, our brain health, our ability to focus um, when we think about what we're going to be eating. Okay, so let me just say this about focus. Let's, for example, for example, when a lion is in, you know, they're in the wild. When the lion is hungry, the lion is focused, and it is focused on one thing, food. It will find its prey. It will hyper-focus. And if you ever watch videos of this on some of the, you know, um, National Geographic or whatever, and they, they show us, and then boom, they launch. Whew, they get it. They take it somewhere or whatever, and they eat it. Now they've had their food. Hyper-focus allowed them to move quickly, get there, get that animal, their prey, take it, eat it, probably go to sleep. You know, of course, they have reproduction too, right? So that's in there somewhere, reproductive things. Carrying on their, you know, breed. But bottom line is focus, focus, focus. Now, we also know, though, when we're over the age of 25, neuroplasticity of the, the cerebro, the brain, is a two-step process, two steps. Numero uno. Focus, hyper-focus. Number two, sleep. Focus, sleep. Maybe you focus for one minute, take a break. Another minute, take a break. Five minutes, take a break. Whatever it is, on whatever you're learning, any learning event, anything you're learning, focus. That marks the neurons for strengthening. When you go to sleep, they're strengthening. And then a few days later, you wake up and you know something or you're better at something that you've been f practicing and focusing on. All right, so hyper-focus. Well, I'm going to close out with this. 
before we do the nine words one more time, uno mas. Uh, if you're a little bit hungry when you're focusing, you're probably going to focus better. Think about it, folks. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, I appreciate everybody joining me. One more time, um, I want to go over the words. Okay. But if any of you tend to bow out right now, please wish Russ Parker, mi hermano de otra madre, Russ Parker, miércoles este semana, he will receive on Wednesday this week a hip replacement. Russ, we love you. Love you like a brother, my friend. You're going to come through this strong. You're going to be, you're always a beast, right? You're going to be beast, baby, beast. And we'll get you back on, you know, whenever you're ready. Next week, um, I'll be here. And if Russ is with me, fantastic. If not, he'll come back the next week. Russ will be back. Um, we love you, Russ. You're going to conquer this hip thing. Let's go over the nine words. One more time. Uno mas. Okay, what are the words? Escribe, por favor, in the chat box. Yes, Jan, Russ is like one of my best friends. I love him dearly. He's such a great example for humanity. He inspires so many people. His story is in my first book. And uh, absolutely amazing person. Nine words. Let's do it. Ready? Green. Oops. Verde. Cucumber. Pickles. Y griega, yellow, corn, lemon. What are the other three? Tres mas, rojo, tomato y pizza. Oh, tengo muy hambre. But nope, pickle, quarter pickle at 2 o'clock. Um, I think that's it. I think that's all for now. Oh, I did want to talk real quick about Oaxaca. Um, Thelma, I met you in Oaxaca. Uh, el gusto was mío. Eres una mujer incredible. Um, el gusto was mío to know you. I'm so glad to know you. And, um, of course, Alice, uh, Alisa and Madre, uh, her, madre her mother, um, Sandra, Lucio, and Hillis was there, Laura. Who's an amazing who's an amazing friend amazing person and she also did um, um a wonderful job translating for me we just had a fantastic workshop adriana silva mendoza was there and um we we really were treated so well and i am grateful for the friendships of everybody um thama i will see you when i come back um most likely in julio te veo in julio um, and I'll we'll see people and teach people, help people do fun things. And uh, Felipe Castaneda, hey, what's up? Saludos, mi amiga. Oh, my amigo, sorry. Lo siento. Um, and Monterrey, Mexico. Yes, I'll be going to um, uh, San Luis Potosi in the very, very, very near future. Uh, not sure exactly. Maybe uh, tres semanas. Uh, we'll see. But uh, Felipe, I'm going to get to... Monterey at some point in the near future. I don't have dates yet. Kind of waiting for this vaccine to get to your town and then I will come there for you. I'm already vaccinated and I'm not worried, but I want to make sure you guys can get together. Um, I could ramble on and on and tell you how much I love all of you because I do. I really am I'm just grateful for the friendships that I have who, of people I've met all over the world. Felipe, Jan, um, Thoma, Karina, Kevin. Mom is here. Uh, Anna, in uh, Portugal, como esta Anna, Jose, and Jose Antonio Vasquez, como esta, senor? Wow, I feel so good. All right, folks, listen, I'm going to get going and do some writing. I need to write. I need to research and write, study, and then I'm going to go exercise and then help people. I hope you have a fantastic day. Our hearts go to Russ. You're a beast. You're going to dominate this hip replacement. I will post this later on the YouTube channel of the Neuro Bros Show, and I'll post the link on Facebook. Más tarde. Okay? Uh, que tenga un linda día. Toma, Jan, Karina, todos. 
Have a fantastic day, everybody. I will see you next Monday. Alas, dias. Adios.